All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a thankfully cooling down San Diego after our heat wave. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Glenn Sandifer, who is in Ohio. How are you doing, Glenn? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Excellent. And Glenn uh, is a senior director of Securitas Technology US and leverages his 20 plus years experience and his MBA in project management to lead inside sales and client success teams, ensuring high quality service and satisfaction. Uh, and he also holds low voltage cer uh, certification alarm and general systems and is able to actually provide technical guidance and support to teams and clients. And what we're going to talk about today is a great subject. I think you're going to love this is inside sales challenges when running an inter enterprise sales group and how to overcome this as a leader. And I guess the, the one of the most interesting things about this, Glenn, as we just talked before we came on air, is these these challenges, they're not static challenges, new ones, you know, you overcome some and yeah. new ones come up all the time. Like you said, you already had a, a brand new one. Uh, introduced today um so just tell me um for those of people who just who aren't you know familiar with the difference and just explain to them what an inside sales team is yeah traditionally an inside sales team is one that is aimed to provide a more qualified prospect for outside sellers or aes uh, we think about it most in terms of SaaS offerings where there's an SDR or BDR that does all of the outbound prospecting or the inbound lead qualification. Once they get it to the point of nurture to presentation, they then send it over to an account executive and that account executive will then take the relationship there from nurture to further discovery, to deepening discovery, uh, then to quote and then to close one or close lost business. So inside sellers typically have a legacy, as most people know, from the telesales days. You think about the old jobs at West where it was telemarketing calls, where you were trying to get people to buy the, the Richard Simmons tapes or uh, purchasing the George Foreman grill or the dehydrators. Um, and then it kind of evolved into other ancillary products and then financial products like credit cards. So those same principles are still at work today, but inside sales has completely changed. Yeah. Uh, inside sales now requires you to be able to not only have the right message at the right time, but reach the person at the right place. Telesales was all about being on the phone and calling a home line or a desk line. Mm -hmm. Inside sales right now is about contacting someone on social, contacting them on LinkedIn. We want to count that as social, contacting them on email, text message, phone call, or any type of mailer. So yeah. there are a number of channels in which you have to manage in order to get that message and get the response that you're looking for from your client. Yeah, and a big shout out to George Foreman. Love those grills. Yeah, Used to have grills, many right? of them. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, essentially, uh, essentially, Glenn, you know, the role of an inside sales rep, I mean, the skill set needed is much higher than it used to be in, in the previous yes. iterations that you uh, that you mentioned. So what kind of people do you what kind of people do you hire for this position? What are some of the traits that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I typically go off of three traits. So the first is grit. I need people who are not I mean, highfalutin or hoity toity or need to have things set up a, a certain way. I need people who are willing to get dirt under their fingernails and do the hard work. Because from an inside standpoint, we are challenged with new opportunities from our clients, from our prospects each day, and you have to pivot. And gritty people know how to pivot. Mm -hmm. Second is you have to be coachable. Uh, because from in the industry that I'm in, it's mostly people who've been around for the last 15 to 20 years selling. Uh, I have hired people that have come from outside of the industry of security and I have taught them security, but what they needed was to be able to be coached, mm -hmm. attend this training, attend this roundup, spend some time in the dashboard for this manufacturer, uh, spend some time with this low voltage company, look at this competitor and then start to learn how to be a better security professional with your current experience. So then I would say it would be grit, it would be coachability, and then I would say adaptability. So mm -hmm. grit and the adaptability differ because as you get hit with new challenges, you have to be lean enough 
with your team and then lean enough as an inside sales professional to pivot. Don't get stuck in, I only want to outbound prospect today. No, today I need you to take inbound leads and I need you to follow up with some of our renewal opportunities. Uh, so don't get caught up in what you are. So it's grit, it's coachability, and it's adaptability. So then what are some of the challenges that, that you face when trying, to, uh, when trying to develop a high performing inside sales team? Um, I think the biggest challenge is, is always going to be personal. So uh, I kind of distilled it down to personal and personality, because if you're not with those three traits that we discussed and you're focused on your way or doing it your way, or you have personal challenges going on within family, within your health, within other areas, within your own personal finances, it's really difficult to get someone into the flow of inside sales. Mm -hmm. That's probably the biggest one. I will say the one that's easiest and what everyone would be able to relate to is people are afraid of being on the phones or respond, responding to emails. They really are. They don't wanna reach out to someone cold. They don't wanna reach out to someone that's lukewarm. They wanna reach out to a warm or a hot target because in their mind, that will be an easier win. And we mm -hmm. often see ourselves as the best version of ourselves and that is a winner. But if mm -hmm. I am on inside sales, I am dealing with rejection all day. I'm dealing with yeah. rejection on people who have filled out a form. I'm dealing with rejection on people that I have called cold. I'm dealing with rejection from my account executives and from my internal teams, from billing, from install, from service. So you have to be able to take dust off that rejection and then move back into the flow so we can get results for the for the business. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, it's amazing what we expect of of, of folks in positions like this uh, where, where you say, I mean, where they're facing so much kind of rejection and challenge. But also, as you said, uh, today, it's like all these multiple channel channels and touch points that you have to go after. So you have to kind of almost be you have to be multi skilled in many ways mm -hmm. to, to communicate appropriately through each channel. Yeah, you have to be multi-layered or multifaceted in your skill set and your approach. Um, it's, it's no longer just a job for people to be on the phones. It's no longer a job for people to respond to inquiries on email or form fill. You have to be able to adapt. And I think what's universal across every industry, clients, end users, whether they're B, B2B or B2C, they're looking for someone to come on with the consultative approach. And if you approach them as a KPI, where I just got to get another meeting, I just mm -hmm. got to get another opportunity created, they're going to sniff it out and you're going to fail. But if you approach them not with your eagerness and your goal in mind, I think you get the result that you're looking for, which is a long term relationship. Mm -hmm. And so um, what are some of the key areas that you coach your inside sales folks on? Uh, key areas that I like to coach them on uh, would be it's probably the best phrase is controlling your controllables. Mm. So don't spend time talking to me or to anyone else about things that are outside of your control. Only talk about the things that are 100% in your control. We can influence a lot of things. And sometimes we do have the ability to influence, but there are only certain things that we're able to control. Mm -hmm. We can control our talk time on the phone. We can control our number of outbound dials. We can control our SLAs towards uh, replying to an inbound lead or an inbound inquiry. We can control uh, how we show up emotionally every day. Can't control what the market does. We can't mm -hmm. control service or install schedules. Yep. We can't control billing and finance. We can't control all of these other things that are very important and part of the business um, and AE response time. We can't control that. We can influence those things, but only to a certain extent. So if you spend your time focused on the things that you can control and controlling your controllables, I think it gets the best result. Mm -hmm. Second thing that I will probably spend the most time talking to my team about, which actually shocks a lot of people, is what are you doing for fun? Yeah. Because high performers spend way too much time at work. Mm -hmm. Now, say me, we I'm constantly on the road. I'm constantly in the yeah. air. I'm constantly doing this. And I got asked the question at a dinner party one time. Hey, so, Glenn, what are your hobbies? And I just had a blank look over my face. And my wife was not embarrassed for me. Right. 
she was embarrassed, like, oh my God, he doesn't have any hobbies. Mm-hmm. He's been so focused on work, so focused on me and the family. He doesn't have anything. So now I have some really great hobbies. So I like to spend time uh, talking to people about the things that I know that they're hobbies. I have a team member who loves soccer. I couldn't tell you anything before I found out he loves soccer about soccer. Right. I know about soccer. I have one that is really deep into fantasy. I love fantasy football. So we can mm-hmm. talk fantasy football. That is their passion. I have team members across the business that are Disney adults. I am not a Disney adult, but I know what it is. And so mm-hmm. I'm able to speak about my Disney experience with my children uh, to, to them and talk about Disney in general. So just uh, spending time uh, learning about what each individual does and then specifically their hobbies leads to a lot of results. I don't want team members burned out. Yeah, I was, I was just, I was just going to say to you that it is, it's a high burnout position, right? If, mm-hmm. if not handled properly. Yeah, if it's, if you don't, if you're someone who doesn't take a 15 minute, an hour, a 15 minute, but you're pounding the phones from eight to six or nine to eleven at night, you're going to find yourself burn out within a quick time period. It'll be nine months mm-hmm. because the inside inside sales was very lucrative. It's a great I mean, yeah. they don't like the language, but let's be honest. It, it's a great stepping stone to get into an AE role and learn the business at the ground floor, mm-hmm. learn about your clients, have some quick wins and put some money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. And then once you've gotten to the cap, it's time for you to move into an account executive role. Mm-hmm. It's time for you to move across other parts of the business. Um, and I think inside sales, unlike a lot of other positions uh, within the company, it allows you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. What are what are some of the things that your top performing reps do that really make them stand out? Uh, they research. Uh, so they the, that would be the first thing. So research would be number one. They spend a lot of time uh, learning about prospects, learning about existing accounts, and tracking their needs. So mm-hmm. we're we're fortunate enough to be in an industry which. I like to say everybody needs it. If you're a small business owner, you got to have security. You got to have mm-hmm. fire. You got to have access. You got to have video. So we're already in a better position than, you know, some of my peers. So but if you don't know how security impacts a business or how there have changes since 2019 to 2020 and 2020 to today have impacted the way that they go to market, you're never going to be able to close win any opportunity. So I would say research would be the key. And then the second would be um, SLAs, hitting their their stated times as far as inbound lead activity and response time for emails. You don't want things rolling over three days, five days, seven emails deep. They're really good at knowing, let me get, let me get to this prospect. Let me follow up with this client on this quote. We no longer deliver quotes o- over email through DocuSign. Mm-hmm. We get on a Teams call or a Zoom call with the client or the prospect. We go through line item and then we let them tell us yay or nay. Yeah. Um, so I would say it would be the research and then their just commitment to their SLAs. Yeah, and it's an interesting, interesting point that you raised there about the you know doing the research and all of that because. We, you know, we've heard a lot of talk about AI and all of this, and then we go, oh, it's going to get rid of all this uh, inside sales and, you know, SDRs and all of that stuff. But, but the reality is that in order to do the job properly today and to be able to engage properly is you actually need that higher level of knowledge mm-hmm. that you just talked about. And I think also uh, the curiosity about business. I mean, you have to really be curious mm-hmm. about the business of your client. Yeah, I think you have to be very curious because if you're not interested in the business of your client why would they be interested in doing business with you um the ai piece is funny because i just saw today on linkedin there's now write a response with ai and i said what is this i was like so now i'm if i'm a thought leader Mm -hmm. which i'm not trying to say i am but all my thing all my statements are going to be ai based no i want it to come on it it has to follow my communication pattern etc and i think that ai has a place but i have Mm -hmm. still yet to engage with any chat function that replicates the need of human touch or connection Mm -hmm. not in my insurance policies not with xfinity not with delta airlines not with southwest it is i always get to resolution once a live agent comes on or someone picks up the phone and calls me. It always works better. And I think that 
as we talk about AI, the thing that we can't forget is that we're all human and humans require a human touch. Yeah. We may want to be able to check the status of our bill or check the status of a service technician coming out on chat. But when we have a problem, we want to talk to someone. If we, uh, we we've kind of done the research, but I'll kind of throw out anecdotally to the audience. When someone picks up the phone and we have messed up, they're basically giving us an opportunity to fix it. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have not called us and just just went on with a competitor. So that leads me to believe that whenever you acquire a customer, most customers want to stick with you because they already chose you. So now they're just looking at you to follow up on the expected result. And you can't do that with AI. It yeah. requires someone picking up the phone. Two challenges today, escalations that got to my desk. And on those escalations, the human touch is what I believe was the main difference between them canceling and following a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And and as we mentioned at the outset, I mean, the thing about running an inside sales team and the and all the changes that go on and the changes in buyer behavior is that for you, the probably the exciting and frustrating part is it introduces new issues and problems mm -hmm. all the time. What what are some of the newer or more surprising uh, challenges that you've come across? Um, I think the newest challenge, funny, is the over reliance on tech stack. Mm -hmm. So, and let me tell you what I mean. Hey, can you reach out to John's Bagels? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the telephone number? What's the email? Did they fill out a form? Did they do this? Let's look it up on LinkedIn. Let's look at Zoom info. Let's look at Seamless AI. Let's put it in uh, Outreach. Let's put it in Cloud. It's like, just call John. John owns a bagel shop. He's <laughs> expanding. I saw in the newspaper. I know this language is triggering. I saw <laughs> that it came through. He's, he's, he's opening 15 locations throughout the Southeast. Give him a call. He's mm -hmm. going to need a security partner. Well, I... I I would love to do that, but if I do that, and then all of the fears start, the what ifs, well, what mm -hmm. if I can't get a hold of him? What if I get rejected? What if he picks up the phone and you are right at the right place at the right time with the right solution? Yes, I actually am expanding to 15 more locations throughout the Southeast. And I actually am now thinking about what does my security look like because my standalone system that I have in my house and in my business no longer are gonna be sufficient. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a headquarters, I'm gonna have my home, I'm gonna have my main location, I'm gonna have a training. So now you are an embedded security uh, partner versus just another vendor trying to sell door window contacts. Yeah. Um, and trying to rely on the tech stack to do that part of the job is what leads people to failing in inside sales. There yeah. are, I got a lot of peers that are directors and VPs of sales and uh, managers and supervisors of inside sales. And I can tell their tech stack list is longer than their roster. And my question is, what is all of that doing to the bottom line? And how is it flowing to the bottom line? And most times they, they don't want to do the assessment. So, yeah. And, and I mean, at the end of the day, uh, your technology should be supporting you in terms of, you know, give, giving you, you know, the inside the information, whatever it is you need in order to to build relationships, to do the human part. I mean, that's the whole if and, and I do agree with you, I think that it has become a, a you know a temptation to hide behind you know mm -hmm. technology and if there's one thing that covid taught us you know that maybe we needed a reminder of uh, a brutal reminder unfortunately but taught us is that people in, is still buy from people and people still want human connection and like yeah. you said if you hit the person at the right time um as somebody once somebody once said to me many many years back if you're not calling your prospect, well, your your competitor is. Your competitor's calling. Someone's picking up the phone. Yeah. I, I use a term, it's coin. It's called local guy number five. I don't compete with the other three top players. I compete with local guy number five who's nimble, who's running a truck with his two brothers and uh, two brother-in-laws. They're running that business. It's been open for 56 years. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that are picking up the phone while they're on a job site. They have enough relationship in market capital and you know as inside sellers we know that that's who we're really competing against mm -hmm. so what would be your last piece of advice for for anybody running an inside sales team what would be the one piece of advice you'd like them to take away if you are running an inside sales team and you are not working on yourself 
if you're not reading consistently, if you're not meditating or spiritual enough to where you're praying, you're not going to have enough energy and strength to do it on your own. Also, get into a group, get into a group of mastermind of other inside sales leaders so you guys can learn off of each other. Try to get someone that's outside of your industry. In my group, I have some that are in advertising, airlines, some that are in QSR and consumer electronics. So we often, maybe twice a year, three times a year, kind of talk about some of the challenges that we're facing and you know, providing each other encouragement because they're not in our trenches, but they're in those trenches. Mm -hmm. And it, for inside sellers, what we do is completely unique to the business service and install they kind of look the same mm -hmm. billing yeah. and ar looks yeah. the same marketing and customer service feels the same inside sales feels more like the sales team but if, but it's more it's more on its own mm -hmm. and having people who are like-minded and in the same experience and at the same level helps elevate you yeah and and uh, i'm so glad you raised that glenn because sometimes i i feel that people unfortunately wait around for their you know their organization to invest in their training or education or whatever and i would say at the end of the day nobody cares about your career as much as you do right you yeah. can't rely on the other. and and especially today like you said with online mastermind groups with so much information out there that there's really no excuse you have everything at your fingertips so you shouldn't be waiting for somebody to do something for you you should be doing it for yourself Yes, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Well, listen, Glenn, thank you so much. This has been great. So practical insights to take away. Uh, really delighted that you could come on today. Uh, but before we, uh, all of Glenn's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. About myself, I am a husband, a father, a Christian. I actually reside in Nashville, Tennessee from Indiana. Uh, but I found that my passion and calling is about helping uh, shape the next generation within the industry. Um, so I, I've also written a couple of books. They'll be in the link. I don't want to talk about them here. Uh, but uh, I want people to be the best version of themselves. And it's 100 percent your responsibility to make that happen. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And as Glenn mentioned, his books and everything, all, all the other information will be below this video. So listen, thanks again. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon.